Welcome to the Make Each Click Count podcast. This is your host, Andy Spleckel. We are happy to welcome this week's guest to discuss today's topic, which is maximizing your online business ROI through intentional focus. Today's guest leads a great team of talented technologists, designers, and strategists at ROI MediaWorks. He has over 15 years of experience working in an ever-changing digital marketing world. A big welcome to Vikrishna Laknia. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Andy. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for having me on this podcast. You know, we're, we're excited to have you. Um, this podcast episode, we're talking about ROI and you have ROI right in your company name. And I love that because, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, ROI is really all that matters. Tell me, was it strategic that you put ROI in, in your company name, I assume? Um, you know, I was a programmer when I started this company and, uh, you know, implementing marketing technologies at the programming level. And I thought like the best way to tell people about rich on investment in the advertising industry is having the right ROI right into it. And if you see our logo, it's actually the closing and opening brackets of like the HTML opening and closes. So that fit perfectly into what we do. And, you know, it's kind of telling more story of non-investment on the advertising campaigns and marketing campaigns that we run for our clients. Got it. You know, and I did visit your website and when I saw it, I was really impressed. You had a quite a few case studies showing increases in conversion. And that's, that's also been a big topic of the podcast, especially this year. So let's start there. What have you done or what do you do for your clients that has had the biggest impact on conversion and, and thus the ROI? I think it all comes down to understanding the their audience, right? Like we work with a lot of small and medium businesses and those case studies are, you know, very few of the clients that we work with. Uh, we go to the drawing board and say, okay, who are your target audience? who you are trying to educate and who are the repetitive customers, no matter what business it is, it's kind of standard. And once you go there, we overlap that into what platforms they're on. Like everybody just thinks like Google is the best way to get advertising or social media, but is that really right for your business? And then once we have that, then we allocate we have X amount of budgets, so let's spread this onto these multiple platforms. And we very much focused on omni-channel for almost six, seven years. So there's no one channel best works for everything. It's just an overlap of understanding what multiple platforms and how you're measuring it effectively so you're tracking these conversions and you know there's a best return on investment. And that's kind of like our holy grail of what we do at ROI and, you know, top with the best customer service we can provide our clients while we're educating them with how the industry is changing and whatnot. So you brought up a, a couple of real interesting points there. Marketing channels, how do you decide? Do you start it pretty even and you're testing everybody um, and see how they perform? Or do you kind of kind of know that this vertical for your other clients is done better on Google or is done better in social media? And you start with most of their budget there and then just let the results results yeah, take, like, take where they do. Yeah, like one of the biggest things learned on that, like everybody looks at what big brands are doing and try to replicate it. But we work with a lot of small and medium businesses, like we're a boutique agency. The same tactics doesn't apply for a population of 300,000 or 500,000. So how do you understand your demographics and audience and really know? And we actually talk to our clients' customers because most of these are B2C. What prompted you to hire this person? Did you look up on Google? What channels did you research? What channels do you spend most of your time? And then what really differentiated compared to competition? Like what is that USP for a client? And how do you highlight that throughout their website and marketing campaigns? And then get some feedback from after the service. Okay, you know, leave us a Google review or Facebook review and then keep repeating that process. And when we first start, we don't have any of this data. So we had to relay on what is industrially available, like the benchmarking reports from Google or Facebook or search engine land. And then you have a grasp of, you can spend X amount of you know, cost per thousand impression CPM or cost per CPA. And then I go back to the client, this is what the industry average is. So if you're looking at getting 
you know, Y amount of conversions, you had to spend X amount of money. And that's realistic. And sometimes if they don't have the money, we just look at where you, they can really maximize their, their exposure. Uh, and I think working with a, a number of small businesses, uh, I know that everybody runs after the tactic, but not the strategy. So I ask everybody to take a step back and look at the overall strategy that fits your business and pick with one channel that really giving you the 80% of the sales and then roll it into others. And then you keep repeating the process. And I think, sorry, sorry, just one last thing. And I think along the process, a lot of uh, clients doesn't know like how to track a call or how to track each click on the website and the landing pages and the sales funnels and the sequence of the flow, right? And, and that just makes a whole lot of difference. Sure. Yeah, I like that. What did you say? You focus on the tactic and not the strategy. A lot of them do. Most of that. Most of that comes for us to the strategy and the tech. Tech. Got it. Now, what marketing channels are you implementing for for clients? You had mentioned Google. You had mentioned Facebook. Yeah, like um, most of them use those uh, Google, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and some on Pinterest. Uh, some on Snapchat, some on TikTok. Um, like we cover all the platforms, but knowing where they're getting best CPM or best cost per click. For example, Snapchat has the lowest CPM across all platforms, but they only have 200 million users, right? And if that product is really geared like a Lego bricks, right? Like create a strategy just around Snapchat and get the kids engaged on that. And if it is something uh, like if we have clients in the cosmetic and medical spa industry, usually in the 45 plus demographics, even though there weren't a lot of that demographics on Facebook and Instagram five years ago, but now that's one of the fastest growing segments. So we use a lot of money to educate, communicate and connect with their audience just on social media. And then when, when they're ready, of course, they go to Google and say, who else is there? How much this, does this cost? Is it a repeatable service that I can hire somebody, right? Got it. Now, if somebody was thinking of starting an online business here in, in 2023, what are some tips that you would give them just getting started? I think the first thing for an entrepreneur, um, I encourage everybody to look at the business canvas model. You had to look at the overall business, just not the marketing aspect of it, because you had to have a product or service to sell that you get paid for it. And then you have different, um, you know, you can say stakeholders involved in that ecosystem, like vendors to suppliers and whatnot. And how did that all integrates into your business? And once they figure that part out, then you jump into marketing and say, look at five other businesses that are in the same niche, that are your competitors, and there are reverse engineering tools that clearly tells you what keywords they're using and what they're paying. And then you can look at what they're doing on Google. And then so as if you look at the Facebook ad library and whatnot, you can see all their ads and you can even see best conversing, converting ads based on the engagement for each of these ads. Then you have an idea of like, you know, that you can use to create a blueprint. So, you know, I'm spending XYZ digital channels. And then let's not forget the good old school of word of mouth and the networking. Um, and that's important too, especially in the smaller markets. You so, have, yeah. You so so you way. had, um, so somebody has started, let's go a little bit further. So they've, they've already are, they're running uh, products They maybe they're running some ads. Um, you know, let's, let's say they're doing it in-house. What would be some advice you would give them? Always having the benchmarks, right? Like how do you, like, Okay, you're getting you're spending let's say ten thousand dollars a month on Google Ads spend. What is your cost per acquisition? Is it like two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars? And it changes from industry to industry. And once you know that, how do you bring that down? How do you optimize it? And most of the businesses, from what I have seen, they go for that top five percent ready to buy. You know, these are the low hanging cherries. Like everybody wants that, and nobody look at the forty five percent of the people that are ready to buy in the next six to nine months. And that time period can be different from industry to industry, but educating them and engaging them, it doesn't happen on Google. They're not going to Google and say, 
how to do my roof or how to fix my flooring. You know, they're going onto YouTube. So how do you start engaging with them? So they come to you and buy that roofing materials from you, or they come and buy that flooring material from you. So it's just changing that tactics in terms of where you're using the budgets and then still keep optimizing it. And while you're doing that, what happens is you're building that nice funnel. So you're creating the awareness, you're reaching the, the bottom line, basically people that are ready to buy from you and then also you're having that two middle line uh, like creating that engagement and connection with these people so let's let's talk about youtube let's go there because um i think a lot of people and i've had you know people on google shopping i do google shopping for people but youtube and educating people how much budget do you recommend that you put into your youtube videos and are you running paid traffic to it are you just organic. Let's let's talk about your YouTube strategy. I I highly recommend organic and also paid. Uh, it's almost like you want to be tactical, like you know, creating a series of videos on how to do stew, uh, like making it entertainment and also education while you're running the ads. Um, so on the average, the CPM is like ten dollars on YouTube. So if you look at okay, I'm trying to reach a million views on these specific channels that are already talking about my product, then you just cherry pick those. And then usually I look at 20% to start with and then up and down just based on what's needed there. 20% of paid traffic? Turn up that paid uh, advertising on Google. So let's say- Oh, 20% of your overall budget you put toward YouTube. Yeah. And are you um, targeting specific channels? Are you targeting topics, uh, all of the above? How are you running those ads? The specific channels um, and also keyword based, you know, there are six different types, right? Like the skippable, non-skippable and whatnot. Um, like the featured ones, they get a lot of views, but not enough clicks. Um, and the skippable get some traction, but the six to 12 seconds non-skippable seems to be working really well. Wow. Like, so six to 12 seconds. That's not a lot of time. What not a lot you, of time. What type of videos are you recommending for your clients to, to squeeze into a six to 12 second video? So let's say, uh, let's take an example of auto dealer, right? You don't okay. need that much. You know, you have a Ford Mustang or Ford Mackie, like a new electric car. You drive into the scene and that's where you end and you lead that customer, okay, learn the journey of Mark that is driving Mac E. And then Mark is basically driving Mac E from A to B and going to different locations in the city and enjoying the meals. So basically we're showing a lifestyle of Mark who is an executive, likes to golf and, you know, or a hedge fund manager that's managing money for other people. So you're building authenticity, you're telling a story and you're just kind of leading the customers into see yourself in Mark's place. And that's where you specifically targeted to people, you know, that are making 150K a year that can afford the 100K car. And so we're talking about planting seeds six to nine months out. How do you, how are you tracking the ROI on that? So there are different levels we track ROI just based on the views to the landing page views uh, to how many actually called, how many actually submitted a request a quote versus contact us or downloaded a PDF. So it's all inbound and each of them has, you know, a dollar to hundred dollars ROI, right? Like you get 10,000 views doesn't mean anything, but you spend money. So, you know, let's say each thousand views costing $10. Like if the person is spending more than 45 seconds on that page, there is an ROI around that. And we just use a rough number to make sense of things because the realistic measurement comes from how many contacts and requests quotes uh, are, are happened, or if it is an e-commerce, how many sales are made. Right. Uh, but at each step of the way, you have such an ROI to know what exactly is happening. So you can get more traffic, but not many people going to the checkout or shopping cart. Um, that's that's a red flag. Like recently, we uh, picked up a, a Shopify client. I mean, they, they use Shopify. And when we looked at their numbers at the bottom line, basically, they're having 80% dropouts at the cart. That's huge. I mean, industry average is around 60 to 70%. So all we had to do is 
make some UI changes before we run any campaigns and do some maybe testing to be realistic. Like, you know, if we can change that conversion rate point from 0.3% to 0.6%, that's doubling their revenues without making a lot of changes. So it's just knowing where to flip that switch. So let's let's talk about e-commerce. So everything has changed. I read everything, but a lot of things have changed since COVID. Right. Um, we've saw just a, a big spike in the last couple of years. Where do you see it going over the next 12 to 18 months? Uh, you know, with, uh, with the way Amazon monopolizes a lot of things, so as every other business, um, I'm really curious about AI. There are a lot of plugins coming out along with chat GPI, um, I mean, chat GPD AI. Um, and uh, this programming is pretty straightforward in the playground and anybody can build a tool and say, you know, I want to order the same groceries every week. So you have a set and it's just automatically, you know, on the 30th day. And I think Samsung is even researching it automatically detects what's in the fridge and places the order as well. Wow. Yeah, so it's definitely heading in a new direction. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the company Mirror. Um, you know, they created this mirror. You can look at yourself in there and basically you swipe through different dresses and then you're not even going out really to do any shopping. You're in your living room trying hundreds of variety of dresses and shoes and say, this is what I want. And that's kind of automated too, because after a while with the data available, the AI knows this is what type of things are trending and this is what the person likes. So how do you overlap it? Boom, this is what you need. Yeah, no, I uh, there's uh, going to be a lot of changes for sure on AI. So it'll be interesting to see see how that happens. Now let's let's transfer um, conversation a bit and talk more about you and, and what you're doing. You have an agency um, that we've been talking about. How, how long have you been doing that? Uh, since 2008, for almost 14 years. So you launched it 14 years ago? Yeah, 2010 is when I actually incorporated it and just dive in full. <laughs> Got it. And when you've been scaling it, have there been any business books out there that you could attribute to your journey as an entrepreneur? Um, I love books uh, and I love people. And, and at the end of the day, no matter what business is, it's the people. And I look at the teams, you know, my favorite book is uh, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, that's one of the best books. And I read a lot of uh, horror business review um, documents just to understand what's happening. Um, but to pursue uh, not only a career and also having an agency in the in industry. Um, do you know Gurbak Shahal? Gurbak Shahal is the original founders of Yahoo in a way. So he started this ad publishing platform when he's 17 from his bedroom. And he sold that to Blue Lithium for like $300 million. And then Yahoo acquired Blue Lithium later on. So there were different uh, mergers and acquisitions happened over that time. Um, and I just admired, I mean, one thing, uh, you know, he has his own story, like being uh, an Indian immigrant family and whatnot, but also created something uh, innovatively that he just made a lot of money. And I think, you know, when you look at, um, you know, go, after going to college, I have my student loans to pay and I had a family, a future family to take care of. You definitely want to look, look into how can I pay that off faster and what kind of career that gives me that. And the, those books really helped me. And I still read like, you know, 10, 20 books every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, right now I'm very much focused on the neuroplasticity and then how the psychology of um, advertising impacts people's privacy and vice versa. Uh, because, you know, the fact is nobody likes ads on the internet. Right. Yeah, no, very interesting. Now, with ROI Media Works, what services are you offering for clients to help them increase sales? Most of them, uh, our big basket is usually the searching optimization uh, with uh, paid campaigns, uh, okay. whether Google or Facebook, social media. Uh, we used to do a lot of content marketing, but like about a year and a half ago, we switched more on to other things that humans can do. <laughs> Just mentally preparing for, you know, I can't have a con content writer because, you know, there are tools that are 
freely available or pay tools easily do that. And um, even with the graphic design, we've moved away from that. So our specific focus is on paid advertising campaigns and setting up sales funnels and CRMs with the search optimization. And do you have a recent favorite success story you could share? Um, especially in the tourism industry, uh, right after COVID, like, you know, we lost uh, a lot of tourism clients. That's usually our 40 to 60% of our revenues every year. So 2020 April, basically we're dropped at, what are we going to do? Um, so there is no clients. And then once uh, the travel opened and these clients are in San Francisco and Hawaii, uh, how do you encourage people to travel and how do you influence their decisions to say, okay, in a book with our clients and our clients basically run uh, tours in Hawaii and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And the goal is you're basically back to zero, but how do you modify your packages to what kind of pages that you set up and what kind of, um, you know, health information you provide or not, because now we have two sides of the spectrum to the people. And then we changed all those landing pages just to encourage in terms of uh, the UI and the colors, like enhance the mood because pretty much everybody depressed being two years at home. So making it fun, right? Like, you know, rather than just book one tour, combine different tours from different providers and say, you know, this is your full day itinerary and this is where you can- Oh, interesting. Making it easier. And the point here is, we're not really selling all of those tours or we don't have any affiliations with the restaurants, but we're giving more information for them to convince and say, okay, you know, this guy told me what to do. So I'm going to book with this company. And then how do you interact with people on like the Facebook groups or even on like LinkedIn groups? Um, and even though these conversations are from people, hey, I'm going back to Oahu or I'm going back to San Francisco, San Diego. Uh, what are the places that I can comfortably, safely, uh, you know, stay for three days or rent a car or what are my options to eat at the restaurant? What is the situation isn't there? And, you know, actually some of my team basically engaged with these people. Hey, you know, this is the recent information with what's happening with the health and that and what are the regulations. So even though that's kind of like doesn't give us any immediate leads, but that builds a trust within the group. So if you see on Facebook, now there's a top fan badge on the page. So once you earn those, people pay attention to those things. So in a way, uh, the brand acting as a persona and building its own credibility by offering all this free information. Nice. Now, were you offering that through YouTube ads mostly or Facebook ads or, or how are you doing? These are, these are YouTube and social media and then some on search as well, because a lot of uh, Hawaii traffic comes from Japan uh, like the tour and Japan took a long time to really open up and allow that travel. Interesting. So with YouTube, especially what, what are some of the challenges that you have had to deal with? Um, like on YouTube, short form content seems to be working really well. And I think it's uh, virtually impossible to have those six to 12 seconds videos, especially in the beginning, uh, because how do you tell a story within that time? And then how do you present more like, you know, the 90 seconds and then three minutes and then even 12 minutes. Uh, what we noticed is the, the more trust you build, people are watching longer the videos. And how do you lead them back to hiring a service provider or buying, purchasing a product? And, right. um, you know, during Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl, all those uh, jerseys and everything were just, you know, the e-commerce is literally integrated on YouTube. And that was the first time I actually noticed it. You know, that's pretty cool. So how do you leverage that and have some of your products in your YouTube? And I think the, the amount of work that goes into each of these and mind mapping this, that's where a lot of stress is because you really need to know what video is connecting to what product and services you're selling and how that's connecting to which landing page. And do we have exactly the same video on the landing page or we have an extended version of it? Right. And it's, it's not easy because you have a videographer, you have a content writer, you have a graphic designer, and you have a developer that needs to build these pages and whatnot. So it's a whole ecosystem that has to work together. 
Now, are you shooting the videos for your clients or are you using existing videos that they have? Uh, we're not. I don't want to spread too thin myself. So we're just focused on what we're good at. And then we just work with the local video service providers and say, this is the type of things that we're looking at. And these are the 10 shots and this is a storyline. And they're really good at doing their job. So. So do you recommend you're having them professionally made these videos or are people just shooting them with their iPhone and telling the story? I mean, what what have you found? Like what types of videos have you found to have the biggest success? Anything, anything high quality professionally done definitely has, um, you know, low cost per click to higher engagement rates because it looks professional and people, you know, instantly build that trust and loyalty. And there are, um, you know, short form content just the phones are fine or if somebody is really want to invest in you know a good 4k uh, webcam and just do whatever they're doing just on their laptop got it so who is the perfect client for your agency that if they're listening out there they should absolutely look you up online and, and get in contact with you um, medical spouse, dentist, um, real estate, anybody just looking to look, you know, look at their bottom line and say, you know, I can really improve this and then 2x or 3x my revenues in the next year or two, uh, they should really reach out to my team at ROI Media Works. Great. And is that the best way to reach you is through ROI Media Works and just yeah. find the phone it number and contact form right on there? Yeah, we have a CRM form there that just comes to the team and then, you know, it's just automated from there. And then if somebody wants to reach out to me directly, uh, personally, LinkedIn is the best way. Uh, it's a VK, like in any VK, L-A-K-K-I-N-E-N-I. And um, they can drop a message or tag me one of their posts and happy to consult and look at what's happening there. Oh, great. This has been a lot of fun. Is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap it up today? Um, there were, there were a couple of things I was thinking, uh, you know, when you asked that question about what the future of advertising industry or where the e-commerce is going, I believe that, um, you know, everybody, uh, you know, talk about crypto, but there are ways how you can use blockchain in our advertising industry and IBM is really leading the way. And I think that's where everything is going because of the fraud that's involved in the privacy rules and how do you manage all of this using AI and using blockchain. And I think that's the way to go. And that's where all these DSPs and SSPs, everybody is moving forward, but it's still in its infancy. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, well, those are some, some great closing words for us. Thank you, Andy. Hey, thanks for joining us. For listeners, remember, if you like this episode, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave us an honest review. And if you're looking for more information on ROI MediaWorks or connecting with VK, you'll find the links in the show notes below. In addition, if you're looking for more information on growing your business, check out our all-new podcast resource center available at podcast.makeeachclickcount.com. We have compiled all of our different past guests by show topic and included each of their contact information in case you would like any information on any of the previous episodes. Well, that's it for today. Remember to stay safe, keep healthy and happy marketing. Have a great day.